Welcome back to Med Audio, the audio channel for all enthusiasts that, like me, are loving home theater and hi fi, and why not also sometimes headphones. And finally, we are going to review the P300 from Buchart, where on this video I'm going also to compare it with some of my favorite bookshelf speaker. Before to start, a big thanks to Buchart that sent it to me to review it, and as always, I'm here to share my honest opinion with you guys. Something interesting to notice is that Buchart is selling passive speaker only in bookshelf sites. Where you would like to go with floor standing speaker, you will face the active technology. But that is another story. And the P300 together with the flagship model S400 MK2 are coming with a retail price of 1400 for the P300 and 2100 euro for the S400 MK2. Both are two-way passive radiator system that are sharing same cabinet dimensions with the P300 just one kilogram lighter, but coming with different specs like crossover points, crossover quality and frequency response. Unboxing the P300 is amazing, great quality. For me, packaging my first impressions is really, really important and there is a great careful attention from Buhart Productions in this great, with the speaker covers that are simply fantastic. I really love the magnet grills. Not only beautiful finished, but are following also the driver geometry. Make it look fantastic with and without grills. Actually, you can see it there closer to the SPS Ultra bookshelf speaker a review coming soon. Speaker constructions and quality is fantastic, really solid. And I received this white finish that is more than perfect. I couldn't spot any imperfections on it. So really we are speaking about premium quality, love it. The only things that I found a little bit cheap are the binding post. If you remember, I found something similar also with the Audiolab 7000A, cheap binding posts that are not giving the possibility to fully insert my banana plug speaker cable. Looking at the speaker, there are a couple of things that jumped on my eyes immediately, like first one is the positions of the tweeter, with the mid-range driver arranged at the top and the tweeters at the bottom of the baffles. And the reason for the upside down is related to an homogeneous radiation behavior and a better acoustic integrations of the speaker into the listening room. Also for control the directivity, we can find a waveguide on the Twitter, make it perfect for room not acoustically treated, that will give also a wide sweet spot. Plus, in order to phase align the drivers, they had also to leaning the cabinet slightly backwards. Then we have the Twitter dimensions, only 19 inch. And on Buhart website, you can find a great explanations about it. And in the end, we have a passive radiator on the back that allow to reduce the size of the speaker by the 30%, still conserving an incredibly deep bass, giving less artifacts, less noise, and a more forgiving placement closer to the wall. Specs are also really far away from what I saw in most of bookshelf speaker. We have 86 decibel of sensitivity with a 4 ohm nominal impedance and the frequency response is basically a full range speaker frequency response. 37 Hz, 40 kHz, plus minus 3 dB. Just to give you an idea how deep is 37 Hz, the 5040, acoustic 5040 that we just reviewed is reaching 39 hertz so that's crazy that's basically having a floor standing speaker frequency response inside a bookshelf speaker wow i performed some basic frequency response test in my room of course not an anechoic frequency response with umic one and room echo wizard and we can observe immediately a generous boost in the bottom end make it low frequency, sounds rich and engaging. But I will not really call it a dark sound signature because it really doesn't sound 
too much rolled off or recessed in the in the top end but i will speak about it just in a moment so bottom end frequency response is just insane if you take in consideration room gains you are touching 30 hertz without any problem back on setup is really important to give at least 100 hours i couldn't believe it of uh, break into this speaker it will sound really different especially on the bass that it will sound less aggressive less muddy more defined but also the mid-range will shine more before was a little bit laid back I noticed also that this is a speaker that doesn't require a full toe-in that has to facing you. I give it just a little bit, really not so much. And really important it will be to place your ear level between waveguide and woofer because really it will affect the balance between bass and the rest of the frequency range. So take it in mind. So after that I complete my positions, placement, setup, process, I move to something that I enjoy more, is more, more funny to do it and is about choose the right amplifier, testing with different amplifier to, to see which one is the favorite for the Buhart P300. And I start my test with the V3 Mono from Fozzy Audio that we just reviewed but was lacking a little bit of transparency on the mid-range. Top end was, was fine, but bass a little bit too much muddy for my personal taste. So I moved to Audiolab 7000A, but also there I didn't like the bottom end, it was too much rich and warm for my personal taste. The 7000A uh, audio lab is already coming with this sort of, uh, of tonality and uh, no, I didn't enjoy it with the Buhar P300. So I moved to Musical Fidelity M5 SI where his neutral presentations and solid bass performance was able to give the right amount of grip to the P300 with an explosive dynamic that I was looking for. Make it neutral amplifier like the M5SI really, really perfect for the Buhar P300. Of course, it's all subjective, right? It's all about personal taste, but I'm sharing with you guys what, what I found. But is moving to the Musical Fidelity A1 Class A, we review it, I will let the link in the description that I basically falling in love with this speaker. And I was not expecting these. I thought that these speakers are, I don't know, hard, a little bit hard to drive, but Absolutely not. The 10 watts of the Musical Fidelity A1 were more than enough. Bass was still explosive, warm and punchy, but for some reason stop end now was more transparent and refined, coming out with a little bit more details compared to the M5 SI. With mid-range the tree start to shine and Vocal in instruments no more under this rich warp bottom and umbrella, but there no more laid back and with more contrast. Also, I noticed that with the M5 SI, sometimes I found myself to cranking up a little bit more volumes to let the mid range having uh, more contrast compared to the bottom end, something that with the A1 didn't happen. But let's break it down in some quality is really hard to be not impressed by the P300 scale and dynamic. It's warm without sounds dark or laid back. It's punchy, it's plentiful in the bass, but clean and pretty defined. Bass boost on P300 make it sounds rich and really engaging without never having a rechest mid or hidden top end when match it properly with the right amplifier. And I played uh, an interesting playlist, really beautiful, uh, called uh, 10 Years of uh, Cobas Germany. First song is the beautiful In the Air Tonight of Phil Collins, airy voice extended far away behind my back wall. And by adjusting the volume on voice, drums was generous and dynamic. Rapid full body's performance 
with an appropriate definition. Wow. Moving to the Till Brunner trumpet in A Thousand Kisses Deep, double bass was giant, extended deeply in the sub bass, as never heard before in any bookshelf speaker, presenting all the nuance that I was looking for. And I'm speaking about bass because bass is, is part of the speaker, guys. It's part of the speakers and you basically will notice it in, in each song. So it's really important always to have it clean and defined and, and that's what Peter Handed is doing. By the way, it never subtract light to the beautiful airy trumpet. Moving to dreams really put a smile on my face. Trump intro was again powerful and plentiful with a fantastic rhythm on the guitar bass line, but never distract me from the beautiful vocals that was full of life, air and clinic in the center. Again, bass line played a big role in this track, was a little bit emphasized, make it really funny to listen, but always, always clean and defined. Billy Heilish, bad guy, absolutely no subwoofer needed in this track. And something really beautiful is that comparing such a setup with a setup that is coming with a subwoofer is that with a subwoofer you have, if well, well set up, you have the feeling that the sub bass is coming from the room. But with a speaker like that, like the P300, you have the feeling that the bass, the sub bass was hitting my chest with such an impact coming from the center stage. So not only clean and defined, but the way that is delivering this punchy bass is different compared to, to a system that is uh, coming with a subwoofer. It is really another feeling and I really, really like it. Moving to Hotel California, guitar was probably not one of the most defined or full of textures that I ever heard, but coming out with a beautiful metal flavor along the cymbals, with the soundstage that was incredibly wide. Nora Jones' voice in Don't Know Why was airy, big, sweet. The most sweet that I ever heard, probably not, was coming out with more, more body compared to other speakers. But at least not lacking of finesse and absolutely no sibilance problem. What else? Nirvana smells like teen spirit. This speaker can definitely rock with a lot of scale and I had the same amount of fun playing these songs with the P300 as I had it with the Klipsch Heresy 4 that we just reviewed. So when it comes to rock, metal, EDM, absolutely any problem. Oh, we have also in this list Miles Davis with Kind of Blue. This is a track that I'm really familiar with. Miles' trumpet was smooth cymbals on the right was coming out with a lot of energy, Coltrane on the left was big and bold with a smooth and warm sax. Other speakers like for example Sonetto One, one of my reference speakers presents Coltrane with a little bit more nuance and shades, but at least on the P300 was invisible. It never called the attentions on the speaker. Paul Chambers on bass was big, clean and extended in the fifth octave. Cannonball on the right, again smooth, a little soft, not really dynamic, but clean and well defined. Another track that really impressed me, okay, let's, last one, otherwise we will not finish this review, but I really enjoy each songs and is Massive Attack, Unfinished Sympathy. And really funny because if you close your eyes, this is not a bookshelf speaker, really. I was so, so impressed. Not only the cleanest level of uh, sub bass output, there is a ton of low end extensions really able to simulate a subwoofer presence. Okay, quick on comparisons, I compared the P300 with uh, one of my favorite bookshelf speakers in 
yeah, retail price under two grants, that is the Sons Faber Sonetto 1, not the G2 that we just saw at the Ike and Munich 2024. And if you are interested, please check my interview with Sons Faber engineer. The Sonetto 1 that is still a little bit more expensive, something like 300, 400 bucks more than the P300. And here comparing the two graphs, we can see that the Sonetto is not coming absolutely with the sub-base extensions of the P300, with an overall frequency response that is a little bit more extended. Regarding some quality, when we speak about technicality, so imaging, uh, I prefer the Sonetto, it will give you also a little bit more details in the top end and in the mid range, it's also a little bit more refined in the top end, is absolutely also lacking the sub base of the P300, yes, the Sonetto is a little bit more, more technical. And then I compared also the P300 with the KF LS 50 meta, also with a retail price around 1500 in both Europe, I think in Europe is around uh, yeah 1200, something like that. But yes, we are in the retail price under 2000 uh, bucks also here and the construction quality of KEF, oh my god, is really excellent. The first times that I took it in my hand I was really impressed by it. Look also really, really beautiful, available in many finishes. And here comparing the P300 frequency response with KEF, the bottom end of the KEF LS 50 meta is pretty lacking of power and authority. If we not take in consideration room gains at uh, 35 Hz, we will have a base that will collapse basically under 80 Hz. Free of colorations, mid range on meta is really amazing. I mean, I find myself listening for vocals, instruments, uh, violin, piano, uh, brass instruments, really sounds free of any artifacts or, or colorations. Beautiful, really precise and full of textures and nuance. Female's vocal coming out with sweetness, really delicious. But it's fine till you are playing mm, high quality music, uh, music that is well recorded, but as soon you will find yourself playing something that is not well recorded. For example, Smashing Pumpkins, 1979. I really couldn't listen it on the LS50 meta. Any type of 90s music just sounded not good on KEF, where on P300 was shining, was really engaging and coming out with a lot of fun. So when it comes to this type of music, also with rock or EDM, it's really slacking on the bottom end. Let me know what you think about it in the comment sections down below. So in the end, if you are looking for a bookshelf speaker that is playing mm, like a floor standing speaker, really the P300 will give you a lot of fun. I never tested anything like that, playing with such energy and confidence in the sub bass. It will penetrate the body and easily fill the entire room, doesn't matter which track or which kind of music genre you will play, you will always have fun. But I always say that it's nice to having fun, but it's also nice to have a performance that is clean and refined. And that is what P300 will deliver. And let's not forget a performance that is fatigue free. Buchart, well done, and I can't wait to compare it with the S400? 400? 400. From Med Audio is everything. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Please let me know in the comment sections below if you have it, what you think about it, and see you soon. Stay healthy, peace, and love.